last week. I chatted with the amazing Rebecca Bowden, my awesome daughter. But tonight we have an amazing, amazing woman, Chantelle Girardi. Um, don't knock her. She's from South Africa, but, you know, <laughs> she's an Aussie and um, we love anyone that comes into Australia. So uh, we've got an awesome conversation with Chantelle. But before I um, introduce Chantelle, Chantelle is a Facebook strategist, strategist. Ex yeah, expert. I got it right, got it out. Um, and I'm not running off any notes here. I'm running by memory. So, uh, but that's not what we're talking about tonight on what she does. We're talking about her journey, um, how she's come from South Africa to lots of things people may not know about her. Because as you all know, in Vino and Chat, I have a new program coming out called um, Rocking Your Visibility, and this is Chantel rocking her visibility by being live on our show. And also, Chantel is one of the five amazing women who will be joining me uh, as a woman of women of influence once we get that up in the coming weeks. So, Chantel, it's over to you. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you one question. Yes. <laughs> what is your favourite drink? <gasps> oh, come on. That. come on, that's always got to be the, the debacle of is it the wine or is it the coffee? Like <laughs> it's, it's the age-old tale of wine or coffee. So start the day with coffee and end it with wine or maybe mix it up and do it the other way around. Um, well, but my flavour today is... is red, you're a red drinker. Well, I'm a I'm white drinker. I'm a red drinker. Drink. I'm a white drinker, ah, but, I, but I also do love a really good drop of um, red. And my um, my goal, or my uh, I've never uh, actually been a bit tight. Spent the money. I've always wanted to have a drink, a bottle of Grange, share a bottle of Grange with a good friend. I don't know whether you've done that yeah. yourself. No. Do you know that I haven't even had Moe before? That's an Australian thing. And I, I to this, I've been here eleven years, and I still have not had. Moe. Oh, I've, had, I've, I've had some of it. It wasn't as cracked up as what it's meant to be. But, yeah. but then again, after a couple of mouthfuls, everything tastes the same. So, no. yeah. yes. so um, we'll get into it, Chantelle. So um, you're from South Africa, as I've let the viewers know. So I think the Chantelle from South Africa was a very different person to the Chantelle of Australia. So I'd like you to share um, with the viewers who South African Chantel was. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, I'm from Durban, South Africa, and um, I was born there. My mother's actually, uh, my mother's family is actually from Italy, and they moved to South Africa. So hence why I talk with my hands, because that's the Italian coming through. <laughs> um, my family are still, um, my mom and my dad and my one brother and one sister are still in South Africa. And my other brother has immigrated to Ireland and are trying to get my mother across to Ireland as well. Um, South African Chantel is, well I, was, well, I was overweight up until the age of about 20. Um, I come from a family of, my mother's like this. She's a stick figure. She's like Barbara Streisand, the Italian, very tiny. And she could eat anything she liked. Biltong fat, condensed milk, potato chips, lollies, like whatever she wanted. She drank cordial and she just stayed like this. So hence we had the same diet. But unfortunately, <laughs> I took off to my dad who came from like the Dutch sort of background that were a little bit stockier. And um, yeah, you know, we all picked up a lot of weight. So up until my 20, I was quite overweight. In fact, I remember, I remember a time when I was 13 years old and I was going to fly in my uncle's little plane and we all had to stand on a scale. And I remember him telling me that he that I was too fat to get on the plane because <laughs> I was 60 kgs at the age of 13. And he said to me, and I will never forget that day, you know, just feeling so incredibly terrible. But, but what happened is when I hit my 20s and I started to study to become a school teacher, I started losing a bit of weight um, and I started feeling good about myself. And when that happened, I realized I could lose weight and I decided that I would teach myself how to. And that's how I got into the fitness industry. So South African Chantel went, had this whole weight loss journey from going from overweight and with uh, diabetes, cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, to needing to go onto medication, to educating herself on not being able to do that. Um, and at that point, I was a school teacher 
at All Boys Christian School, uh, King's Christian School in South Africa and an All Boys Private School. And, um, and I was teaching and at the same time I was a swimming teacher, a triathlete, I did sports modeling at one point um, and decided that I would teach people how to eat to lose weight and how they could live a balanced life by losing weight. And that's why I'm so passionate about the health, wellness and fitness industry. Um, so I went from the extremes of being overweight to then I got obsessed and got a bit underweight um, and did the whole diet pills and everything as well and messed up my metabolism. Um, and then to realizing, well, hold on a sec, um, I think when I fell pregnant with my twins, realized that, well, I can't be excessive in anything. I can't excessively tired, diet. I can't excessively uh, take uh, diet pills. I can't excessively exercise because now I was pregnant with my tw identical twin girls. So I decided that I need to find a common balance. And that's when I became so passionate about teaching others how to do that. So I think education and being a, teacher's, a teacher and a motivator has always been something that I've just been so natural with that I've absolutely just loved doing. Um, and yeah, and that's what I did in South Africa. So in South Africa, I worked at private gyms, I managed private gyms. I also owned my own center in South Africa. Um, but it was relatively easy because everybody knew me and everybody saw my journey and everybody walked the journey with me. Um, and, of course, I had the grannies to help me with the children and I had the nannies to help me with the children. So I didn't have to, <laughs> I didn't have to worry about that too much. But, um, yeah, coming to Australia was a different ball game for me. Oh, well, I never would have picked you as a school teacher, Chantel. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and, and for those that, um, that I've, um, haven't met, I've, I haven't actually personally met, we haven't spoken in um, real life, um, but I've actually seen Shell sat in a in a room where Chantelle has spoken about what she's doing now, and um, she's very passionate. And and sitting in that room at um, the Small Business Expo at Logan uh, on the Mount Cravat, uh, in my my actually where I grew up, I grew up at Mount Cravat, and um, I would never ever have guessed that you were a school teacher, never. <laughs> Um, and I can tell you now that um, boys are super easy because if you want to get their attention, all I had to do was, because um, I was a prep teacher, so I taught prep, all I had to do was just stand up on the, on, the, on the tables or I just had to do a funny dance or sing and I'd just get their attention and they'd be back into it again. Um, and the funny thing is when I found out I was pregnant with identical twins and it was other boys or girls, I knew I said, I want boys because I'm trained in boys. But I know God's going to give me girls. I just know it. I just know that. Well, hey, that's a bitch. <laughs> so. Well, Chantel, um, Chantel um, from, from me, from a spiritual perspective in, in, in what I do, but very grounded, I can actually understand why um, God gave you, the universe gave you girls. <laughs> so I, I, will, I, will share with, oh, I will share that with you. Um, not, not while we're live, but um, at, at another time. Talking about um, girls, having twin, you had twins, and then you had another. Then you had another daughter. Yeah, so um, you know, this is the mentality of a what was I, twenty nine year old. Uh, I fell pregnant the first month of being married. Uh, first month of being married, fell pregnant with identical twins, and this was after having gone to the doctor and them saying to me because I was a triathlete and I had. Um, a lot of exercise stress, um, and I had an underactive thyroid. My husband at the time, he'd had cancer, so he'd been in chemotherapy. So they said to me, look, your chances of falling pregnant are not good, so, you know, don't worry about it. Just a couple of years, just go with it. First month, I was like, bang, twins. <laughs> so, um, um, But, yeah, a couple of years, about two years later, I decided that um, I wanted to have another one because I wanted to experience one. But... <laughs> I didn't experience one. I just experienced three. <laughs> so, um, but I'm grateful enough to have had the, you know, the support of, you know, three sets of grandparents in South Africa, along with being able to have the nannies and the support there. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of your posts on Facebook with you and your girls out there, and um, I, 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 I see that you're really close, and 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 you do a lot of stuff with your girls. And a lot of boy stuff with the girls. Like I said, <laughs> fishing on the boat and, you know, it's not like girly, girly, but it's just like, yeah, 
giving them a, 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 an overall good grounding um, experience of all different things that there are out there. That's only because of the COVID. We're allowed to fish. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm literally bribing them and that's becoming our new thing, that we're fishing to feed the family, <laughs> jump on board and learn a new skill. So, all right. Um, so are they, are they girly girls? or They are girly girls. So the reason, I mean, you would have seen my other banners with my short hair. They've yeah. all made me grow my hair and I have no idea what to do with this. Um, it bothers me beyond belief. I have a hair tie sitting here and I cannot wait to strap up my hair. I would rather have it shorter, but the girls want me to have it longer. And um, But in saying that, if I cannot get a makeup artist, like if I'm going to one of my awards and I can't get a makeup artist or I can't do my nails, my girls can do it for me and they can do a damn good job. So um, they're exceptionally talented at that. Yeah, and that's why I said that's why I think the girls, you've had girls because um, and why I, why I can actually say that is that um, that sort of I, I've, I've been following you and stalking you for, for, for a while and um, we have um, many different mutual friends on, on, on Facebook and that and, and it's like and I, and I see you pop up in, your, in all your beauty on, on some of these award nights that you've been on and and it's just like, you're just like, hey, shit, look what I look like. And you're like, holy fuck, <laughs> this is me. And, I mean, you look absolutely stunning, but it's like you're, you, you're like, I don't know whether whether I want to be like this or I don't. And and, and I don't I don't mean that um, in no. um because I can feel that because that's how I look. I've recently had a photo shoot. I had a photo shoot done and I looked at the photos and went, holy shit, is that me? <laughs> because, yeah, like you, I'm comfortable with, um, you know, it doesn't matter whether I've got makeup on or whatever, and then you've got to get dressed up and it's like, oh, shit, I've got to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> So, I just don't think it's necessary to wear makeup all the time. Yeah. I just don't think it's, you know, necessary to have to go to so much effort every point of the day. I would rather be doing, I'd rather be out and about. I'd rather be walking the dog. I'd rather be on the beach. I'd rather be inspiring, motivating or doing another live than sitting, spending an hour doing my hair, my makeup. So. And, and, but, I mean, Chantelle, that's what the people want today and, like, um, in, in business about um, three or four years ago, or even um, everyone wanted this perfection. But re in reality, people just want you. They yep. want you to show up as, as, they want me to show up as Sandra, and they want you to show up as Chantelle because that's how people connect with us today. And if we can't be who we are in everyday life, then we've just got a mask on. Well, here's the irony about that because um, I met my partner on Tinder. He's from New Zealand. And we, uh, this Saturday, actually, we've been together for four years. And um, when I first went on Tinder, I put all my nice professional photos up and all I got was tire kickers <laughs> <laughs> and time wasters and all I got the, hey, babe. Um, but when I went and I put my pictures up of me, sweating and at the gym and trying to fish and not getting it right and walking around you know that's how I hooked him and, I, so, um, and it's been amazing ever since so 100% I, I think that um, I'm comfortable with it I do have to sometimes just let people know um, I once went to Brisbane um, to a workspace and when I went to the workspace um, you know I heard it was a workspace and I work at a workspace on the Gold Coast and literally I can go there dressed like this. And I get up to this workspace and it's at, at Eagle Street. I don't know if you know Eagle Street. Yes, I, I do. Did, I did not know Eagle Street. Anyway, I get there and everyone is wearing like the suit, the high heels, the makeup, the everything. And I'm walking in like this. And I literally walked in and went, oh, you should come down to the Gold Coast. Our workspaces are a little bit more like this, a little less like that. Sorry, didn't get the memo. And I just knocked it on its head because I was like, I was so underdressed for it. But it doesn't mean, you know, that you're going to deliver on performance or you're going to deliver on, on anything else. Um, it's got nothing to do with that at all. So, yeah. So, and, and, and I think that's great advice because many of the viewers that are watching tonight, um, I know a lot of the viewers that I have, the single, divorced women um, looking for partners and they get a little bit intimidated by, you know, if they do want to, and, 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 and myself, 
especially myself, thinking, what photo am I going to put up on Tinder or put up on this or put up on a dating site? Because, you know, there's, we have this um, reality or this belief system that we have to be perfect, but we don't have to be like that. You know, men, there are real men out there that want real women. Oh, 100%. And um, so many of my girlfriends have said to me I should actually start up a, an agency where I, I help people set up their profiles for online dating because I've been able to match so many people just by putting up their worst, not their worst pictures, but their everyday today pictures because it's all about personal branding and, you know, people buy from people they know, like and trust. And when you want to develop meaningful relationships, they're going to develop a meaningful relationship with someone that they feel comfortable with. And if they feel comfortable with somebody who is talking with their hands and doesn't have makeup on and doesn't give a shit if they don't look perfect all the time, that's okay. Um, and if they don't want that and they want something else, that's okay too. It just means we're heading in two different directions and that's okay. So, cool. yeah. So how was your, um, you've come from South Africa. Now, I've got quite a few South African friends. And what they find and what a lot of people, what of a lot of Australians find and because I, I used to work for BHP in my corporate days and we had a lot of South African um, bosses and different people from South Africa that worked for the for the um, where I was um, for BHP and a lot of people f found their um, the accent of South African very sort of a little bit abrupt how have you found that being in Australia, and I know this isn't one of your questions, but I... I love it. No, I love the question. Love it, love it, love it. Love the question. So um, I actually learned this, and I, I learned it because... Well, I learned it the hard way, to tell you the truth. Um, so I tell people what to do, okay? Yep. <laughs> um, so, for example, I'll say, you know, have you done the dishes? Have you do the dishes? Um, you know, and people go like, what, what are you, are you like telling me to do? You're not asking me to do the dishes. Um, you're just telling because in South Africa, that's what we do. We literally just tell people to do stuff. And it, it's not because we're trying to be rude or disrespectful. It's just a cultural thing. And, um, my partner kind of discovered that, uh, in, I think it was August last year when we went to South Africa, when he heard my sister-in-law go, have you done the dishes? Have you bought the food out yet? Have you cooked the food? Have, you know, have you done? And my mother was like, is this done yet? Have you done this? And, and he was like, I now get it. <laughs> so it is definitely a cultural thing, but it's something that I had to identify and realize that. Um, and what I learned was you have to ask permission. If somebody's a stranger, you can't just go and give them advice. You have to give them permission. So is it okay if I offer you some advice, or would you like some information about that? Or would you, and I've learned to sort of adapt and put that process in place. Um, because unless someone's given me permission, or they're paying me, I don't really have permission to, <laughs> to tell them what to do. Um, and it can be, you know, not everybody wants that. And that's okay. And in fact, part of my onboarding process now when people choose to work with me is that I straight away say to them, they actually have to sign an agreement to say, they are coachable. They're willing to take direction from me. They they open to learning something new and trying something different. Yeah, and, and, and Aussies would be the hardest ones to get. Like I said, I, I, I worked for BHP. I had many South Africans that worked in there. A lot of people didn't um, didn't like them, and they'd have managers that they couldn't they 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 just couldn't um, communicate with. And I'd be like. I'd sit there and listen to and truly just just block out and listen to what they're saying and get to know them as a person. And it's just it. And the more I, I, I worked with them or the more that I got to know them, it's just part of the culture. And I've got a wonderful friend um, here on the sunny coast who's, who's, who is South African and, and very much the same. And I get along really well with her because I just know that she's not, it's just, it's, it's a cultural thing. And, and I've, and our Aussies are so laid back and we fucking hate being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's why I brought it up because I feel that it's a really important thing for us as Aussies to know and as we um, go through this great global change that we're going through on the planet that to look at, look behind the person and look at the culture and go, 
they're not really telling me what to do. It's just it's just how they've been yep. brought up. Or, 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 There's or no ill intention. That's the yeah. thing. There's no ill intention. Everything comes from a good heart space where they're really just trying to um, just trying to help, um, and which is which is which is really really cool. And but a lot of people love South Africans as well because they're hardworking. They've got a fantastic work ethic, um, and really they will always go the extra mile. Always yeah. the extra. And, and this is my South African friend, Helen, who's just put this up here and she's just gone, ha, ha, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Helen, where in South Africa are you from? Let us know. I'm I, from Durban. Yeah, she, she, she'll, she'll put that down there. Um, I think she's from Rhodesia. I'm not quite sure. I could be wrong. So, Helen, please don't bash me if I am wrong. <laughs> well, my mother's from Rhodesia and then they moved to South Africa after Or, that, or Zambia. So. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But, I mean, she's a, she's, she's a wonderful, wonderful soul. And, um, yeah, she's – she. I just get her because and, – and, and for me, I get her because I, when I worked for BHP in my corporate days as a um, – health safety training environmental officer um i had to work with a lot of them and and bhp brought a lot of them into um in, into australia and in, in in the maintenance area and uh, yeah the guys especially the guys were really like the men and like for us for me being an australian woman was like don't fucking tell me what to do you abrupt so and so i really had well, to look you're not going to get me to <laughs> to be on the side of the South African man because I ditched mine. So, um, but, but, but to work with him, I had to realise that that's just the way that they are. Yeah. And but my sister-in-law, she works with a South African, you know, her boss is a South African man and she actually loves it, but she's also a straight shooter. So she she appreciates the forthrightness of it. Does she oh. From Rhodesia, yep. So my family from from Rhodesia, and then from Joburg, Johannesburg, for a number of years. Um, I lived in Johannesburg for about a year um, in Eden Glen. So depending on when you moved here, because Eden Glen was a, a particularly new area, um, which I stayed in, um, and that was probably in about two thousand and four to two thousand and five, I would say. I stayed in Eden Glen, and I taught at King's Christian College which was just at the turn off to Soweto. So every day I would drive where it said, do not slow down, you know, you could get shot. Um, I had to drive through that intersection every day to get to King's Christian College to teach. <laughs> so so um, how did you find moving to a new country? Um, look, I never came, I never been to the Gold Coast. I had been to the sunny coast previously. Uh, when oh, I, that's a good place. I know. I've got, and I have some family there. So I had been across to there but any South African who can get out tries to get out and that's what I did um, so when we got the opportunity to come to the Gold Coast we just took the opportunity and came um, and we didn't know anyone and I still remember the the first day that we were here my one-year-old um, well we couldn't find the car key so my husband at the time he went to work because he came in at, well we came in on a working visa so he was working I'm there with a one-year-old and two four-year-olds trying to get to the bank to exchange my money work out where I am, where the shops are, how I can get food, what I can do. And I cannot find my car keys anywhere. Um, and the company had got us this $2,000 car, which the roof was falling down. So my kids like had to hold up the roof. Um, so I reckon they got good shoulders from doing that. And I could, we could not find the car keys anywhere. And the whole day, I mean, I was in tears. I could not find the car keys. Anyway, I went, bugger it. It's five o'clock. I'm cooking dinner. Opened up the oven drawer where all the pots and pans are, and there's the keys. The key <laughs> My youngest had taken the keys and thrown them in there, and I could not find it. Oh, it was so, oh, you know, I was so angry, and on top of it, you know, so incredibly jet-lagged as well and overwhelmed. But moving here, you know, the girls got uh, quite sick quite often, um, quite a lot of flus and gastros and stuff because obviously new bugs, new germs, new whatever, and not having Centrelink or not having any financial aid and with the exchange rate of being 10 to 1 at that point, we literally came here with nothing. Um, so, yeah, uh, stressful but incredibly grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, and, and like, I, I know what you've done. I've been, um, like I said, I've, I've, I've been fault stalking you for a little while and following you um, and I know what you've achieved yourself as a woman, um, which we'll discuss um soon but you had a 
Well, I think it's quite funny because you call it a pre-midlife crisis. I just call it a fucking midlife crisis because you obviously weren't in midlife um, when you had this, um, this this crisis, which has obviously changed your life and in and, and, and what you're doing. Well, I think what happened was I was already kind of displeased or unhappy with my relationship with uh, my children's father in South Africa. And I kind of realised that I'd sort of made the wrong decision or because I was 28 years old um, and that's late for being married in South Africa. Like it's a cultural thing. If you're not married by 28, that's terrible. My sister was married at 18. My brothers were all married early. I, I was 28 and not married. It's not good. It's like really bad. So when the opportunity you came. The shelf, were you? <laughs> so I just went, okay, yep, I'll get married, you know, cool, and then fall pregnant straight away with the twins. Um, and because, you know, we had our own jobs, our own lives and the nannies and stuff, we didn't have too much interaction in that. So when we came here, I was like, well, this is either going to make or break us. And, um, and when we came to Australia, we actually had to spend more time together and actually had to talk more and agree more and get along more. And I realized, you know, I don't, that's not what I wanted. Who I had become as a mother and as a wife. And how I was expected to be, I, I wasn't comfortable with that. I, I, I decided that I didn't, I didn't want that. I've always wanted to be a working mom. I've always had heaps of energy. I've always wanted to be able to do it all. I didn't want to be stereotyped as and stay at home, look after the kids, and just cook, 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 cook and clean. And that wasn't me. Um, and it's almost like I'd been expected to do that. So, um, I decided that, you know, after a couple of years of being here, I would just take the step and just leave and go and do what it was that I needed to do. And I didn't even know what that was, but I did it anyway. Um, and I think the twins were nine at that stage and my youngest was five. And I just went, I'm just going to open up a health wellness, health wellness and fitness centre. Um, and that's what I'm going to do, create my own space create their own, bring in the own, like the people that I want to be surrounded with because all the like-minded people, so not the people that we had, but more the people I wanted um, and just bring them into my life and just create a new life. And, you know, with that came a whole lot of like, who am I? What do I actually like? If somebody asked me a question, I wouldn't, I didn't even know how to answer it. If somebody said, if I like black or white, I couldn't tell you because Having been married and had kids, I had no idea. I had no idea what I liked or didn't like or what I wanted. So I had to do sort of a lot of self-development stuff. I had to work on myself quite a bit. Um, yeah, I actually had anxiety for about a year. I had anxiety attacks. Spent a whole year or two crying. Like so many people on the Gold Coast will remember the crying Chantel. Um, but I just, you know, I had to, and I had to go through that process but from that process then I created the space, the Health, Wellness and Fitness Centre. And what I realised was that isn't that wasn't exactly what I wanted. But what I did want to do is help motivate and inspire people um, to do what it is that they love and to be the best person they can be. Um, and I did that when I was a personal trainer and I'm doing that now as a Facebook strategist. Being able to help those that are already struggling and they can't see the other side of stuff. You know, I just have this ability to be able to motivate and inspire them and hold their hand and just take them through it um, because I'm an activator. I love to help people take action. And, um, yeah, so, I, you know, I call it my, my midlife crisis and, you know, that's the time that I jumped on Tinder and I did the wrong things and I did the right things and I would not give up any of it for the world because, you know, I met my partner and um, I created this new business that I absolutely love. And my other business was so incredibly successful from the Facebook strategies that I used. Um, and it was sad for me. It was sad for me last year, March, when I decided to sell that business and to walk away from it. But for 20 years in the health and fitness industry, I just could not work the hours there. And then on top of it, do all the Facebook strategy stuff and travel and speak. And it, it just became too much. So... Um, I had to choose and I, I chose that this is what I was going to do. Take all my experience of my mistakes and not doing what I wanted to do and the frustration and overwhelm and then just turn it into something beautiful for somebody else. Um, so they don't have to do it. You know, they don't have to go through that bullshit. I can just help them get there quicker.
Yeah, and you know, recently I saw you um, on Facebook where you're posting. You 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 you, you, ch you grab whatever opportunities you can get. You put yourself out there. You're visible, and I know that you're becoming more and more visible because, like I said, I've been watching. <laughs> Blood <laughs> and <you're>, stalkers, <laughs> and, and, and you are fucking everywhere at the moment. And you got this amazing opportunity because you were at a small business expo. As a speaker, and I'm saying this because I have a lot of women that follow me that are in business or from different places around the world, but you stood up, you got an opportunity at Paula Brand's um, small business, and it was an Australian-wide opportunity that, that you actually had because you were brave enough to step up and, and be seen. Would you well, like that, to share that? Yeah, that was actually quite a funny story because you know a lot of you don't actually see the full story on Facebook, which is quite funny. The full story be behind that was Porter Brand kept messaging me and Annette Densham as well because they were involved in organising that, and they kept messaging me asking me that they wanted somebody who had created a business or got a lot of income through Instagram. So they're actually looking for somebody who had generated income through Instagram and, and, and developed a business through Instagram successfully. Well, guess what? They couldn't find it. <laughs> they talk about all these influencers and people and, and everyone was like, yep, yep, yep. But nobody could actually talk about saying that they'd actually done it for themselves. And I kept going, Facebook, Facebook. I do Facebook. I can talk about Facebook and how I did it and how I'm teaching others to do it. And eventually they went, okay, Shantel, you can come in and do it. So... <laughs> It was pretty amazing and it was it was really cool because on the day, um, I actually had one of my clients who was like, I don't know, 41 weeks pregnant, who actually I'd never met. I'd only ever coached her online, coached her online, trained her online, met her online, did everything online. She actually came along and watched me. And when I saw her in the audience, I actually broke my eight minutes of speaking just to acknowledge her and say, hey, so good to see you. You're about to pop a baby. Thanks for coming. <laughs> it was such a good surprise to, to be there. But, you know, that was something that I learned. I learned that um, when I gave up and I had that midlife crisis, I decided that I'd be a yes person for a while. Um, and there's pros and cons to that. So the first thing was I'd be a yes person. I'd say yes to everything. So I don't know if you've seen that movie by Jim Carrey. So I yep. said yes to everything. And what happened was I had the most weirdest and amazing and crazy, unusual experiences and opportunities happen. But what also happened was I got freaking exhausted because <laughs> you cannot just say yes to everything. So what I learned from that is that you have to have a strategy. You have to have intention. You've got to know where you're going. You have to know what your non-negotiable values are because those are important. Your non-negotiable values that's something that I compromised you know when I got married that was something that I let go on but do not compromise on your values um, know what you stand for don't give a shit about anything else focus just on where you're going and what you want to achieve and then all the opportunities that come that are head towards that say yes to those not the other stuff <laughs> so that is awesome and um, the boys in your life. I, I'm interested in in this because I've never actually had anyone say me ask me about the boys in my life. Now, <laughs> what about the boys in your life, Chantel? Please, well, <laughs> we well, are mainly. This is a mainly women viewing this this show, so they'd be they'd be keen to know about the boys in your life. Well, um, when I got my own house and I'd left my husband, um, my daughters had said that they wanted a dog. So eventually, we got a rescue dog. Um, and when I said to the girls, what do you want, a male or female? They said they wanted a male because they wanted a male in the household. So we got a male dog and that was really super cool. So a male rescue dog, his name's Ziggy, he's 32 kgs. Um, and um, yeah, he's, he's really cool. You'll see him in some of my pictures and stuff. Um, but he's been really fantastic in teaching the girls, my daughters, um, about the male anatomy because when he was a pup, he actually licked his doodle so much that it got inflamed and, and fell out. And then he had to go to the vet and they had to put it back in again, uh, you know, as a boy would do. Um, How do you, boy? <laughs> and as they've gotten older and as they've gotten and had their sex education talks, they're now very aware of how everything works. So it's been great and I highly recommend getting a boy dog if you've got daughters. <laughs> um, it helps bridge that gap. 
Um, but one of the other most important men in my life is obviously my partner, Sandy, who I've been with now for four years. And as I said, he's from, uh, New, well, he's from New Zealand and uh, he calls Australia home. Uh, he owns Giant Bicycles uh, Southport Labrador, well, part of that. And, um, and he is, um, so I would say my husband at the time was the opposite of what I am. Uh, but because I thought opposites attract, you always hear that. Don't ever yeah. do that. My advice is do not do opposites attract. Uh, it does not, it's not worth it. Um, but he's just the same crazy as me. And we love and accept each other's craziness. And we get it. Um, and it's super cool, super awesome. And we can be who we are. Um, and we love that about each other, which is really super cool. So can you just say, I know he owns a bike shop. So can you just let the, I know, on the Gold Coast, correct? Giant Bicycles, Southport and Labrador. And while this COVID virus is on anyone that's on the, on, on the coast, he's actually fixing because I saw that he did, I saw Paul Brand. Yeah. Um, yep, so he yeah, has I've been... done my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Thank you. Yes, we did help uh, Paula service uh, her daughter's bicycle because obviously right now with the COVID, they're unable to, uh, you know, a lot of people, they need to exercise. They've got to get out of the house. Um, gyms have been closed as well. So a lot of people are buying bicycles. They're needing their bicycle service. Um, but they also do things like servicing the uh, bicycles of the nurses and doctors that are actually cycling to work uh, in Southport, people who don't want to take public transport at the moment um, and are needing, you know, using bicycles instead of public transport or using electric bikes um, or alternatively wheelchairs. They're also servicing and repairing wheelchair tyres as well. So um, it's a much needed service right now um, and they are, they've been in the industry for so long. They do so incredibly well with what it is that they do. Um, so throw my name around, go and see Sandy and the boys at Giant Bicycle Southport or Labrador. And the reason I, the re I don't, and people that have watched my show know that I don't normally do this, but we are in such a time of, of change and small business and, and being a small business owner myself, you're a small business owner, uh, and for people to know that small businesses are out there, they are open and they are doing some amazing things, it's it's really important that while we are live and we are visible that we give a shout out for free to these people that are doing amazing, um, amazing things and that's why I wanted to um, get some more inf information on what um, your partner's doing in his business as well as yours. Yeah, it's been so. It's been quite funny because it's almost like every Monday morning at four a.m. we have like a strategy talk about this week what's happening with the new legislations with regards to COVID. <laughs> How are we now going to create a new like bicycle shop? So we've got like drive-through bicycles and we've got social distancing. And we've got all the health practices in place and you know a certain amount of people in the shop and all the signs go up. So it's like <laughs> a new strategy each week. <laughs> So, Chantelle, um, as we as, as we close up, where can people? No, what well, before I ask where people can find you? Your Facebook strategist says there's a lot of people that watch that follow that follow the show that are business owners and some that aren't. But for the business owners that are watching, and how can they? How can you help them in this time of COVID? And I know this was, I've just thrown this on you because it wasn't one of the questions Love that you it. asked. I'm absolutely fine. So how can you help them? How important is it at this time to have a strategy for Facebook? And, um, yeah, what can you do for them? We've got about five, six minutes, seven minutes. Excellent. Go. Oh, fantastic question. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, oh, my gosh, just please go and subscribe on my website, which is chantelgerardi.com.au because we're constantly putting out podcasts, uh, live interviews, webinars, up-to-date training every single week. There's probably two blog posts that go up every single week. Um, this will go out to my database as well. Like we are like information uh, overload because we just want to support business owners as best we can during this, during the, during everything. Um, and I completely understand that some people do not have a marketing budget and they do not have startup capital. Um, and this new era of using Facebook in your business is completely overwhelming. Um, and the good news is, is that if little old me, you know, mum, school teacher can teach herself Facebook and save her business and create this, you know, this amazing sort of business for it, for everyone and win all these awards and be on Channel 9 News, well, good 
good news, you can do too. Yeah, like seriously, I can just show you how, uh, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, a couple of the things that need to happen right now, and you hear people saying pivot. Um, I prefer the word uh, adapt. We just need to adapt and people need to adapt anyway. Your customers changed right now. So what are their needs? What are their wants? What are their aspirations? Because that's changed. So you need to stop and you need to go and you need to work on your new avatar because it's changed. And after you've done the avatar, you then need to go and look at what do they want right now because that means your offer has to change. And your desirable offer needs to be desirable. So uh, you need to create something that people want and are prepared to pay for. And the third thing is, and that's, this is the good news, is people will pay for something that is valuable and needed and will get them results. So people are still spending money, but they're spending it on the right things. So you need to figure out what that is right now. You need to create a program around it. And then when you market it on Facebook, you need to use the right key messaging. You need to use the right language, the right type of content to be able to get a yes from them. I always talk about, you know, it's like foreplay. You have to get a yes from them. Um, oh, there's going to be no happy ending. There just will be no happy ending. So um, you do have to make sure that you are showing interest in what it is that they're interested about. You have to identify with their pain points. You have to connect with them and develop a meaningful relationship. Then you have to solve their problem. And that would have changed. Whatever your desirable offer is, guaranteed it's changed right now. So you have to relook at that and come up with something else. And guess what? Only one thing, for goodness sake, don't fluff about, don't have 10 things. Choose one freaking thing that you love doing. You know it gets results. Focus on that thing and make it happen. Awesome. Uh, I just just love what you've just shared. And um, when we kick over on um, Women of Influence um, TV uh, and you're part of that, uh, and I, I'm, I'm just actually going to tell you, share this now, is that each of, the, each of the six women that are over there will have the opportunity to do once a week or whenever they want to is to um, do their own show on there and get their message out and do, do whatever they um, it is that they can help women through this time just not only women but men too if they want if they choose to jump in and watch all us sexy women over there that's fine we are we're not we're not we're not feminists um so come over and watch um to be able to do that and and, and set that out so i'm really really looking forward to you sharing some more of your tips uh on on a half hour show over there on your own um, as I said, I haven't actually shared this, but it just come to me. This is what I, I need to do as you were going through all of that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. <laughs> as well as our own um, morning or whatever, where we, the six of us or five of us or four of us, whoever is available at that time, get together and, um, and share whatever it is that we're to share to get through whatever it is. And um, the Women of Influence TV show is going to grow and grow and grow because the women that I have chosen and, and I have I put the call out and I said, the universe, I don't know who these women are, but they turned up. I specifically picked as part of to be to be part of this show. I know I have got so much to offer, just not Australia, but to offer the world. And they are women of authenticity, honesty and integrity. So you will find when we when we kick that show off that we're going to have an amazing time, a lot of fun because we're we're not full of fluff and bullshit. We're just who we are, and um, it's one of the reasons why I I I I, I really wanted to connect with Chantel and and share Chantel's message because she's not someone of fluff and bullshit. She's honest. She's authentic, and um, she's got a lot of integrity about what she does. And when I put my name and I link my name to someone, it it's not, and people that have followed me for a long time know that I just don't do it willy-nilly. So, Ch Chantel, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank and you. You have shared so much. It's been an awesome interview. We've just flowed with it. And I cannot wait when we kick off um, with the other four amazing um, women because my vision for women of influence isn't just a show it's to it is going to grow it's going to grow bigger and um, there'll be more eventually um, on there some people come some people go but there's a 
There's a whole branding, whole strategic planning around that. Where it goes, what it does, I really don't know. I'm just leaving it up to the universe. So, but before we go, give me a couple of things people may not know about you and where they can find you um, to connect with you to help them um, set up their Facebook stuff. Excellent. So what you may not know about me is my nickname is Show and Tell. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I'm a bit worried about what you might show and tell. Um, and that was because when I was a school teacher, they couldn't say Chantel, so they said Show and Tell because <laughs> you had Show and Tell days. So they always used to go Show and Tell. <laughs> so it's stuck. Um, <laughs> and it's relevant, so it's okay. <laughs> Um, and where people can find me is on my website. Seriously, um, there is so many incredible resources available on my website, which is chantelgerardi.com.au, which is difficult to spell. So just go and have a look because it's with a C and it's got a Y and so much going on in the name. But have a look at it, chantelgerardi.com.au. And please subscribe because once you subscribe, you just get access to so many free resources because we are constantly sending out valuable up-to-date information and support and i'll put that link in um when i'm finished um when this when the show is over probably tomorrow probably not tonight um but i'll do that and people can um contact um contact you and once again um uh, chantel thank you so much for joining us to all our viewers out there thank you for joining us tonight on vino and chat it's been an amazing interview uh, and it's just freaking awesome that we could actually get up because we haven't been able to do anything for two weeks. I mean, I did an interview my amazing daughter um, last week and we chatted about stuff, but it's really nice to get um, to get back to the way that the show is. So thank you so much for joining us tonight and um, want to connect with Chanel. Chantel, Chanel. Chantel, <laughs> sounds like a perfume. Um, <laughs> Chantel, just yeah, you know, leave leave a message. Chantel will either get back to you or I will, and we can um, pass it on. And um, Chantel will get a copy of this um, show tonight, which I'll put into Dropbox, and she'll be able to use it anywhere. So you'll be able to um, connect with her in all areas. Please do um, connect with this amazing woman who's got so much to share and has got so much honesty and integrity and authenticity, which is really, really important in this time of great change on our amazing planet. When we come through COVID-19, we are having a planet of so much abundance. Hang in there, people. Know that it's there. Believe in it and shine your light just like Chantel has um, tonight. And if you ever want to jump on the show, just message me because I'm happy to have a chat with you as long as you're up for a glass of vino. <laughs> Talk to you all soon. See you next week. Bye. See you. Bye.